It's been a while between drinks. This is Holden's first off-road wagon since the adventurer. And Holden is hoping that it tempts those of you that can't stand the thought of an SUV. It's now built in Germany, so it's a very different Commodore to the one that you're used to. But is that a problem? In the world of wagons, size definitely matters and the Tourer's got you covered. Measuring in at just under 5 metres long, it's about 50mm longer than the previous generation sport wagon. And it looks pretty good I reckon. Up the front here you've got these Matrix LED headlights. They literally turn night into day. Under the bonnet is a new engine, a 3.6 litre V6, naturally aspirated. It makes 235 kilowatts of power and 381 newton metres of torque. It's got a new 9 speed automatic gearbox and exclusively available with all wheel drive. Now that styling continues around the side to these plastic wheel arches. They indicate the fact that it sits 18mm higher off the ground than the standard sport wagon, but I reckon the rear is my favourite. Come and have a look at this. Not only does the rear look better than the liftback, it also has a cool feature. At night time you get the Holden logo projecting onto the ground as an LED. And the reason for that is that you leave the key in your pocket, put your foot under the boot and then it opens. Now when it does open, you're going to be presented with this giant boot, 560 litres of cargo capacity from the floor to the top of the seats, and that expands to a mammoth 1665 litres when you drop those rear seats. And they drop in a very clever way. All you do is pull this switch, and they just drop down mechanically, which means you don't have to put any effort in at all. It is an incredibly cavernous space. If you're going to be spending any time in the second row, you're going to love it here because there is plenty of leg room, lots of toe room and decent amounts of headroom as well. And that's despite the fact you have this giant moonroof there with a retractable cover. In terms of comfort, you have this center armrest with a couple of cup holders there. You can charge your USB devices with these two USB points. You've got rear air vents plus seat heating for the rear as well and two ISOFIX anchorage points. So what about this front seat? This is where you're going to be spending most of your time and this is a super premium place to be. This steering wheel sits beautifully in the hands. You've got a set of paddle shifters there as well. Ahead of the driver, there's a big LCD display that you can customize. There's a heads up display as well, which means you'll never go over the speed limit without knowing. The cornerstone though is this, the eight inch MyLink infotainment system. In there you have DAB digital radio, you have Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. It's a really good unit and super easy to use. Now in terms of storage, you have cup holders, you have storage here, you've got a center console with wireless phone charging and USB connectivity. You'll never be too cold or too hot in these seats. You have seat heating, seat cooling with massage function as well. Plus you also have the ability to self park the car if you aren't too confident with parking on your own. So this is where the Commodore is going to spend most of its time in and around suburbia. And for that, it does an incredible job. The ride is fantastic. The steering is really responsive and this engine has plenty of poke. Being a family car, the Commodore is loaded with safety tech. It comes with things like autonomous emergency braking. That's a technology that will stop the car if you don't. It even includes pedestrian detection. You've got blind spot monitoring plus a lane keeping assistant, which means that all you need to do is look straight ahead and the car will basically do the rest. But the main reason you're going to buy this car is to get away on the weekend. While the Commodore Tourer performs well around the city, it feels far more at home on an open country road. And that's partly due to the Australian ride and handling tune. The guys that tuned Holden's Australian Commodore have also worked on this right from its inception. And they've got a custom tune on this car just for the Australian market. Which means that roads like this that are undulating and all over the place are just dealt with without any dramas. Holden claims the fuel economy of this car is under 10 litres per 100 k's, but it's a little hard to believe given we are at 13.7 at the moment, and that's after a good mix of city and highway driving. That's going to get pretty thirsty once you start sticking this thing full of kids and your luggage as well. Towing is a breeze with the wagon with its 2100 kilo towing capacity. That makes it equal to the previous generation Commodore, even in V8 trim. But where you're going to notice the difference is with things like overtaking and hills when you've got a trailer attached. You find that the V6 really lacks that punch that the V8 was easily able to deliver in virtually any gear. Under the skin of this Calais Ventura is an all-wheel drive system and at the back it uses a Twinster unit. Now that may sound familiar because it's fitted to the Ford Focus RS. It uses mechanical torque vectoring and you can send up to 50% of torque to that rear axle. The system can then split that torque up to 100% to either tyre. So it's an incredibly versatile system that gives you added surety on all kinds of surfaces. 
Road noise is pretty decent out here on country roads. There's not much intruding into the cabin. There is a bit of wind noise around the windows and the air conditioning system is really quite noisy. A lot of customers are still driving on gravel roads and Holden has focused a lot of attention to that in their tune. It soaks up all of these bumps beautifully and sends enough torque to the rear for an engaging drive. While the transition to German-built Commodore has been an incredibly controversial one, this car right here is the pick of the new Commodore bunch. It offers the perfect alternative to families that don't want an SUV but need stacks of room inside their car. Plus, it is excellent to drive. To read more about the Calais V Tour, head to caradvice.com and don't forget to subscribe.